All right, welcome back everybody here to Kicking It with Knubel, episode three. Uh, Mike, we're back. Apologies uh, from myself from last week because uh, I totally botched the last episode. We didn't have an episode last week. I had a little bit of a technical uh, issue on my end with my microphone. Uh, everything should be sounding better right now. And uh, Mike, we're back. We're back. We're energized. Uh, well, I'm glad I didn't have anything to do with it. So yeah, <laughs> you just blame me for this one. Yeah. Um, like yeah. Um, but no, we're back, Mike. Um, lots to talk about. I know last week a lot of the topic for the episode that didn't come out was uh, Kolosov from finally coming over, Luchenko kind of making the team, all that kind of jazz. Um, as for Kolosov, well, I'll start there, um, and then we'll kind of get into Luchenko, a couple other things. So Kolosov played last night uh, against the Islanders, played probably half the game, came in about like nine minutes or so, left in the second period. Um, looked pretty good. I mean, I, I was there at, at UBS. Um, he was solid. Um, I mean, he didn't, you know, face a ton of shots. The Flyers didn't really have their best lineup. It was really like, it kind of felt like the lineup that was like, throw these guys out here so other guys don't get hurt kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of like bottom six, fourth line kind of guys. They had three guys that they already had cut in camp play. Um, so not necessarily the best lineup. They lost 4 3 um, with a, play it like the last like 50 seconds it was just like a bad goal to give up but regardless um kolosov came in that was probably the biggest story from last night's game was just him finally getting in the net and playing um after everything that kind of went on that was like you know he was either homesick or didn't want to come to philly and this whole thing and um so he's here he played um any thoughts on just the whole kolosov situation and now just him kind of coming over and finally being able to kind of put this whole thing to bed well it's just it's a lot in one week, right? Like probably a week ago, it was like, yeah, the report is he's coming over, you know, and yeah. then you get on the ice, you arrive in the town, you know, and, and uh, who knows where he's at with everything and what sort of deal or promises were made to get him to come over and, and where he's at with things and how he's kind of come to terms with stuff. And then, you know, have a couple of days on ice and it's, it's totally not unfamiliar territory walking in the building or the rink and, you know, at least in, in Voorhees and stuff. And, it's at least somewhat comfortable in the people, some faces, you know, and then just to uh, hustle up and then, you know, travel the same day as uh, you play up in New York and then split split time through. It's not easy to sit there for a period and a half and come in and play. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's already, de- that's a pretty demanding day, a demanding four or five days since he's been here. So, but um, like you said, out of a, a lineup that you wouldn't consider top notch, there was something to, you know, that a lot of people were interested to see. Yeah. No, for sure. And especially too, because he kind of just came in and just like you just making saves. It's funny because right away he had a breakaway from Matt Barzal, and that's not easy. Matt Barzal is a really high end player on the Islanders. And it was funny because the last the first game that Fedotov ever played in the NHL was against the Islanders, and his first save was a Matt Barzal breakaway. That was I don't know why, like just like the chances of that happening. They both play against the Islanders and it's both that same kind of play. Um they both made the save. It was just an interesting thing that I noticed. Um, but outside of that, I mean, camp is going pretty well for the Flyers. Like they've haven't really had any injuries. Um, in terms of the NHL, you saw Line A the other night. You saw David Reinbacher. They're both out long term for the Canadians. Like that's a huge blow. Flyers haven't really had anything like that. Um, I don't think many teams have. But it, even just in terms of 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 small injuries, like they've been pretty healthy. Like we talked about um, early on in, in in this podcast of just like you know how Flyers have kind of gone into this healthy. Uh, the guys that were healthy that you know or, or that were injured last year now coming into the season healthy coots drysdale versus the line and all guys like that and now you have um where's the line in who looks really good um he's one of the guys that you know we mentioned uh in episode two on just like being healthy and 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 just coming in and like trying to see you know what he could play i'm still in the belief mike that he's one of the guys that maybe towards the deadline the flyers could maybe move um you pay him a good chunk of money. He hasn't really proved that he can play. He doesn't put up as many points as he used to. Um, you know, I'm kind of just like at the point where it's like, where do we kind of go from here kind of thing with first Um, But to his credit, he has played well. Uh, he's been physical. He made some, he's got two goals, um, which is crazy. Cause I think he's maybe scored three or four as a flyer. Um, mm-hmm. but in the few preseason games, he already got two goals. He, it yeah. just seems like, a. a just a total reassurance of like his like his like career like from coming to Buffalo to Philly like there was that whole thing like this guy is just like they make the trade and they overpaid for him and then they give him the big contract and all and now they get him here 
and then he, he just couldn't play. So like it's he seems like one of the guys that's like a bigger factor to the Flyers kind of lineup. Um Torts was kind of talking about him today, saying he's one of the bigger guys going into the season for the Flyers, kind of what happens. Um, just any thoughts on on Ristolainen overall? Well, it's I mean, again, for other parts of the defense that have kind of settled into places, it's kind of like what do you have, you know, what do you have with this guy and what you can provide. And obviously they're tied, they got him. And then and, and rewarded him with a nice contract, feeling that he could be a big part of the lineup. And, you know, it has to be, I guess that's TBD a little bit, right? You know, it seems like you have that with a few spots at forward too. But this is kind of the one one spot on defense where they're 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 trying to figure out what they have exactly, you know. And certainly they hedge their bet and 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 as far as contracts and all that and and locking him up and keeping him comfortable in that respect. Now it's kind of his job to to, to, to do it on the ice. So I don't know from, you know, kind of what you're talking about there and kind of the way it's lining up, it's almost like, well, the, he's going to have a huge part in it. This defensive core is considered successful or not. Right. You know, and so yeah. that's a big, that's a big gap in there. I mean, he had Drysdale as a, 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 an offensive type guy. Eric Johnson now is more of a veteran guy and probably going to be a depth guy. And so they want this guy to be healthy, but you've kind of got a budget, you know, what if he isn't? I mean, you want him to be, you know, and can he be a difference maker? How big a difference maker can he be? Obviously, in, internally, they feel he could be a pretty nice difference maker, right? And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, that has kind of not shown itself yet on the ice. But right. you know, popping a couple goals in, in, in the fall here is certainly a good omen and hopefully, you know, a sign of good, good things to come for him. Yeah. No, 100%. I mean, and, and again, he's just one of those guys that's like, you never really knew what Risto could bring because it was like he was offensive. He's a little bit defensive. He's bigger. Um, now I think he's kind of got his game well rounded. Like defensively, he looks like a totally different defenseman. Um, Bradshaw, I think, really kind of really changed him and kind of molded him into a different player. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of how, how that kind of plays out. Um, right. You got to figure out what he is. You know, what, what, what are yeah. you? you know, what are you? How are you going to be good in this league? You know, we have a lot of tools, but which which tools are going to invest and which ones are going to be. So, you know, with Brad Shaw working with them and, and trying to figure out, okay, here's how we see that you're going to be the best player in this league. I don't think for, you know, like this is, you know, players want to hear that, not not just for this year to be a good year. You know, again, like we've talked about it before, how am I going to be a player in this league for the next 10 years? Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and especially when, you know, you can obviously, you know, change your game and, and still get that money and still be able to play too. That's, that's the biggest thing. Um, okay. So, Jed Luchenko, Mike, we, we talked about this um, a little bit. And Luchenko is is interesting because I think a lot of people have kind of penciled him in uh, to make the team. Um, I am kind of in the realm of like, he needs more time. Um, he's 18. I don't necessarily think he's physically ready. Like he's he's a very fit player, but it's like to go through – a full NHL season. I don't think he's ready for that. Um, I think there's some moments in his game where he looks great. I think there's some moments where he just is kind of invisible at times, not in a bad way, invisible. You just don't really notice him either on the good side or bad side. Uh, he's kind of just seems like he's just kind of, kind of just like floating along. Um, I do think, you know, before he had that great game in Washington to start the year, he had a couple chances. I think if any other boys in that, he probably has a goal or two. And it's like, all right, jet looks really good. And he gets another chance. Um, he plays two more games, both home games, and uh, I didn't really notice him a ton. He, he had a couple, you know, nice passes in the offensive zone, things like that, but nothing really crazy. Um, I personally don't think he's ready for the NHL. Um, do you think he's a guy that can maybe come in here and, and, and make this team out of camp and maybe surprise some people? Because, again, it's, you know, obviously, and we've noted it before, the the long road trip to start the season that obviously the Flyers might have, you know, carry an, an extra forward or, or, or two and then maybe a defenseman. Yeah, it's. I mean, we touched on it earlier here. And you said it's been a super healthy, healthy camp, right? And yeah, you know, I've seen like many times through my. You know, and I brought up Bergeron last. Uh, Patrice Bergeron, and, and I think that was in our last one. I might not made it to air, but mm -hmm. you know, we had a guy like that just hung around and hung around and hung around. All of a sudden, he was there at the end, and yeah, you know, years later, you know, Patrice Bergeron retired as a Boston Bruin. You know, when he started there, so right. um, you know it. it it's almost like he's a player. He's, he's done, you know, he's done a good job. He's probably done all he can do really. And then um, needs a break, you know, like almost like we talked about the team being super healthy and, 
and all that. You almost need a little bit of a uh, somebody to go down a little bit to create that little extra room. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, if I don't know if you look at the the his wealth schedule and see if they're kind of slow. If you feel like it's worth bringing them along, do you have, or, or you know, is it, it? Do you need to hash out? You know, sometimes you let some other things fall into place. Can you hide a guy? Problem is, you got to. You know, he's not waiver exempt. So you like to hide, you like to bring a guy that's on waivers and you have to make a decision and you don't have to, you don't have to put him on waivers yet, you know, and for the guys yeah. on the waivers, you know, they're taking a the guy, you can buy a little more time on the guy. You might have to expose the waivers and kind of see what happens with the rest of the league and bring them along and maybe you play him. I don't know. So I don't know. It's a good question, you know, and, and it's hard to say which one's right or wrong. I think there's pros and cons to each or you just let them go, you know, send them out the door and say, Hey, you are very good in camp, have a great year in Guelph. We're going to see you in the spring. You're going to get, you know, our goal right now is to have you up here for your nine nine games. Uh, yeah. Try not to earn a year. But, you know, and that could change too. And, and you know, if there's a playoff race or something like that, then it gets a little bit harder to squeeze them in, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, you, you can't fit them on the fourth line, really. Fourth line's really – seems to be pretty firm and so yeah. you know, unless you're going to play them on a top nine thing and you feel like you can play them 15 to 17 a night it it really doesn't make sense you just let them go back and and i i don't see a real big hurry you know when 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 it's really the door's not really that open why jam them through it exactly so yeah no exactly and that's how i feel too because I feel like even even if the fourth line is set too there's no point of bringing an 18 year old to play on the fourth line and play five six minutes a night I mean, he he should be playing with offensive guys anyway. You know what I mean? Like, instead of playing with guys like Deloria Hathaway, not that those guys can't score, but they just it's a different role. So it's yeah, just a role. yeah. Like, and then you throw mm-hmm. Cates and you know throw Cates in there, so you have basically have four guys. Yeah, playing on, you know you have four guys playing on the fourth line, so it's mm-hmm. you know it's yeah. I don't know, you know, I mean, you know, so it, it's you talk about the lineup. But I just it, unless the door is pretty wide open, I don't really see a real reason. I don't yeah. see a real and to force them in there if you don't have to. It just yeah. Let them, and, and I this, let them have a great year. Yeah, and, and I think this ties back to your point when you were saying uh, last episode that basically, like, they have a lot of guys right now where there isn't as much competition because they don't have as many veterans, you know what I mean? Where it, it would, like, you look at the roster and you can kind of pencil in the guys in the spots already. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to do a lot of, like, oh, this guy can make it with this guy. You know what I mean? There's only, like, one or two spots that really open up, and it's, like, in the bottom six. It's nothing high. You know what I mean? And, and that's kind of, I think, what you're saying. And this plays into that because – and last night I was, ta- I was talking to my buddy about this. Like, if you look at Scott Lawton, like, a lot of people have kind of harped on Lawton a little bit. And he hasn't had a great camp um, so far. And, and he didn't have a great second half of the season last year. And everyone's kind of just, like, I feel like kind of pushing him out just because – Everything that's been going on, and they've been getting younger, and the rebuild, and everything. And Lawton's been here a long time, and that's Philly sports that happens with every team. They just yeah. push out the oldest guy here. But we, even when you look at it, like no young guy, in my opinion, has come in and tried to push him out of that spot. Like they haven't had a yeah. guy that's, you know, come in and be like, hey, like you know, I'm I'm knocking on the door here and and taking that. And he, it's I mean Lawton. And to his credit, you know, he's a veteran, played a long time. He's, I think outside of Kateria, he is the longest tenure flyer. Uh, yeah, he was there my last year. He was there, too. Yeah. yeah. My, when I was there in 2013, he was there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and like, you know, no one's come in and, and bought, you know, fought him out for a spot. So, like, at the same time, like, yeah, you want to see young guys make it, but they have to earn it, too. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just throw the guys in. And this also ties into the thing with Kolasov, like we were talking about. So, a lot of things are kind of going inside here. But... I think you get my point. None of the young guys have really come in and, and you know, taken yeah. a spot away from a veteran like that. Yeah, you have enough middle of the lineup players that are, you know, nobody's pretty sure if they feel like they're somewhat in, in, interchangeable a little bit, you know. And then yeah. Throw another guy in there, especially, again, like I touched the big thing for me is then you've got to, you know, if you keep him, you got to put somebody else on waivers and move a roster, make a roster spot, and it's – Mm-hmm. I, I think the, the energy, you know what you have to give up to even you know there's there's like trickle down after you after you if you were to give them that spot there's still fallout like then you're gonna have to yeah. move another you have to move another player and and it's you know now you're risking that maybe after two weeks you're like oh, I shouldn't have done that you know and so some of that stuff I think with young players that again that's where you are in the hurry you know like let's not let's not you don't have to be in a hurry and you know and 
a lot of younger guys too. It's it's hard. They'll come for a flash in the pan, and but you know when you get in the rigors of the season and they're day in and day out, and things start the screws start to tighten, and you yeah. know you're off to whatever a certain start after ten games, and it's been pretty quiet as a player, or the team's quiet, or the team's a little bit up and down, a little slow starting. Then you know it gets it. You know who who's gonna whose ice time's gonna get cut? Probably the young guys. You know, so yeah. and the confidence goes down, and so I, I mean I I think. Like again, you want him here for another ten or twelve years. You're not so worried about this year. When I, when the door's not like wide open for him, I just there's no yeah. sense in doing it. So exactly, and and, and again, the, and I said this before: the Flyers don't have to be good yet. You know what I mean? You you don't have to force it if it's not there. And then, you know, I think one of the biggest things that you mentioned last episode too, Mike, is that you know from from like just being in the, in the video room, like from you know one or two things going right and then versus the nine or ten that are going wrong once you get the regular season that's a huge thing too and and then and the mental side of that as well yeah i mean it's it you know it, again we said it, this isn't a developmental league like you can you can make your yeah. mistakes in an, an, an anonymity <laughs> how do i say that word in junior and even in the american league so to speak you know it's mm-hmm. not front, it's not front page news if you uh make your mistakes you know and so yeah you know well it's not an easy time to play in in that respect and and uh you know you, you know, there's a lot of people patting on your back when you're a young guy and playing, you know, fighting above your weight here a little bit, you know, you're playing them, you know, better than everybody thought. But, you know, again, it's another thing to have to stay there. And it, it, it's, it's not as easy as you think sometimes. And especially if you struggle, young guy is going to get taught a lot. And then, you know, mm-hmm. again, you don't have a huge, huge ton of experience at high levels and how to persevere and how to tough your way through things and how to adjust. So it's, uh, again, we just go back to the same thing. Like you just, yeah. Yeah, if the door's not wide open, there's no point forcing them through it. Exactly. Okay. Um, Matthew Michkov, Mike, he's he looks really good. Uh, two goals on Saturday. Uh, he's got six points in three preseason games. Uh, had the overtime winner. Um, I, I think one of the biggest things that I notice so far is just the way the power play runs. Um, I know you mentioned before just kind of guys in that front. And the way that the you know like you don't always have to zip it around. The Flyers have been zipping it around, and, and it's looked better that way. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just think it's a lot better when you can finally run a power play that isn't through the defenseman. The Flyers have always kind of done that. Um, you know, you, you, you had Giroux who who run it in a way, but it felt like it was more of the defenseman um, at times. So I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just. I think the more I watch Mitchkov, the more it makes me excited for the future and, and just the rest of the season, too. Yeah, I mean, it's it, I'm happy for the kid. Like, he's kind of come in as advertised, you know, and it's sometimes yeah. very difficult when you have the big hype, a lot of hype coming in, the hype machine, and, you know, it, it, it's very difficult. But, you know, again, it's the five-on-five five play looks very, like, like um, – uh, like decent two way, you know what I mean? Again, like there's always going to be defensive moments, but you know, if, if the offense is there, you're going to be able to live with all that. And, and then, you know, real shot in the arm for the power play to have a real guy that's really uh, enjoying and understands how to, how, you know, what to do on a power play and, and kind of, I don't know, at the end of the day, I mean, as it filters through, it's probably going to end up, he's going to end up taking more control of it and, and have a puck in his hands all the time. And everybody will want him to have it in his hands, you know? And so, um, yeah, I mean it's 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 good to see that you know, and I, you see, I, I guess you're brought over to score goals, right? And and a, and a team that's a little bit offensively challenged, so it's always it's always nice to 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 score goals. And again, you have, you know, it's come in, you come in, and, and a lot of young guys come in real quick, and 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 that. So again, you kind of see you know as the rigors of the season start to kick in, and teams will be wise. You know, teams aren't teams aren't teams are paying attention as to who they've got to be hard on and who they got to key on and stuff. So. His metal will be tested for sure. Um, yeah. You know, one night they say, "Hey, we've got to be real physical." What happens when we're physical on this guy? You know, and you know, does he really like to go in the corners and stuff? And they'll kind of figure out, you know, and, and obviously every other team's going to try and find, you know, ways to get at him or weaknesses in him or how to expose him a little bit. So, um, but you know, certainly it's come in as advertised and done probably more than than people could have hoped for uh, so far this fall. All right, Mike. So now we have uh, NHL predictions we're gonna kind of look at some teams here see who makes the playoffs uh see who doesn't um start with the metro i'll go team by team and uh just give me a yes or no uh here on on these teams um so we'll go new york rangers first yes i just say yes yeah 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to say, yeah, if you, if you want to go yeah. into it. Um, I, yeah. yeah, I mean, it seemed to be, you know, again, just Sterk and a goal. And I seemed to be yeah. kind of the same team. Didn't really, I don't know if they really lost too much, you know, or so I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I, I think they will too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Carolina? Carolina, I mean, I think, you know, just a young core there and kind of same guys and same situation. So only get a, a, a little bit better management change, but I don't think that should affect too much. But Yeah. 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 Like now, is. now it's like start getting a little dicey. I think with the Islanders, Capitals, Penguins. Yeah. Flyers, Devils. I don't think Columbus, I don't think Columbus has a chance. So you can just limit yeah. them. But so for the next, I mean, for, for the fourth spot, I think there's, you know, there's four teams in there, Washington, Pittsburgh, Philly, and the Devils. Yeah. And I think, you know, I don't think, I don't know if Washington, to me, it's Pittsburgh and New Jersey grabbing the four spot there. Okay. In, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So and then I don't know. And that, and I don't think Washington's going to, I don't think Washington can do it anymore. I think they're, they're done. I think Pitt's, Pitt's stars are aging, but I mean, yeah. it's a little bit better than Washington's. And they've got a couple more of them, I think. So, right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think, I think for me, I think Washington does make it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think with all the all the changes that they made, and they got they got a lot better. They got Logan Thompson, they got Chikrin, they added some scoring depth. Um, I still think Ovechkin has a one more kind of kick left. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Islanders are t- are too old for me. Um, they just, I don't know, they just they just don't do it for me. Pittsburgh yeah. is is interesting. I. I it's so I, I I hate the Penguins, Mike. I it's so hard to to write off yeah. the you know Crosby, Malkin, Latang, all those guys. They, they don't have Carlson for a bit. Um, I don't yeah, know. Russ, yeah, yeah, Russ there. I mean, there's a lot of yep. part, that's scarier parts. It's a scarier team to me. Than, yeah. You know. Did Washington? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I'm not sure, and I you know I didn't play with Alex, and I just it just seems. Like you know, yeah. trying the answer to get him over the, and I'd love to see him catch Gretzky's record. I, I mean, the fact that you're even bringing this up, the fact that we're even talking about somebody getting close to Gretzky is pretty amazing. I know. I just feel like it's sliding. sliding. He needs 42 goals. I don't know if he'll get it this year. He might. He had 30, 31 last year, I think. I thought by may, maybe Chris, uh, December uh, 25, maybe would be. The time. Yeah. Somewhere around Christmas of twenty, the next season. Yeah, the next season. Oh, that I go for twenty five this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I hope so. You know, he gets better. He's pretty. You know, I feel bad for the coach here. Like so, every day. You know, I mean, every every game they're in the lead and there's an empty net. I'd be having him on the ice. You know, you owe yeah. it to the. You know, it's just stuff like that. It, he'll get yeah. it done. Even if he gets five or six empty netters this year, you know, like it. Yeah, he could do it. Yeah. Down, you know, He's exactly. Late. You got to have him out there. I mean, you got to help this guy. Right. Change. Well, that's, it's gonna be a, that's a tough thing. But not every coach gets to has to manage that. You know, yeah. and that, those decisions. How we're going to handle this guy? You know, as he gets mm-hmm. anyway. It, okay. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, to me, Jersey's in. I, I think they're. I think they're too good. I think last year was just was injuries. I think Markstrom was a great addition. Um, yeah. I hate to say it, but I, I do think the Devils are in. Um, and yeah, and show me yeah, why. I, I do think he's in. The Devils aren't no. second to last in the conference mm. or in the Metro. No, they're they should be pushing up top there for sure. And yeah. Hughes, Jack um, Hughes are coming in there on there. They're they'll be fine. Yeah. You think the Flyers make it or no? I don't know. I just I I don't know. I yeah. think I think they need some help from above, man. You need like some of these they teams do. get decimated they, somehow. They, they really need what happened last year again. Or like a lot of teams get hurt, and, and it was really just like one or two. I mean, they were in third place for like more than half the season last year for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think that kind of rounds out the Metro. Um, let's look at the Atlantic. So you got uh, Florida, Boston, Toronto, Tampa, Detroit, Buffalo, uh, Ottawa, Montreal. Um, with the injuries to the Canadians, I don't. I think it's tough. Um, you know, you had Line A, you had Ryan Bacher. Um, I think Florida is a given. Boston, I have no idea because Boston for me, Mike, is weird with the whole Jeremy Swayman thing that's going on, and and they traded all Mark, and if not, if if they don't sign Swayman, then you have Jonas Corposalo, who hasn't really been a proven starter at all in his career. Um, I think the Leafs are a given. Tampa's tough. You you know you lose Stamkos, you add Gensel. I think they're really top heavy. 
but they have the best goaltender in the league uh, on their team in Vasilevsky. So I could still see them making it as like a wild card. Um, the Red Wings, I think it's time. I think the Red Wings have to have to make a push. Um, I think they're right there. You know, they locked up some of the younger guys in Raymond and Insider, and, and they're just kind of right there. I don't think they're as great in net, um, but I do think they could squeak in. I'd love to see Buffalo make it. Um, just because you know they haven't been in so long, kind of similar to the the Detroit Tigers a little bit. I know we were just talking about them before we started. Like they haven't been in in a long time, and the buzz around the city now is probably huge with all that. Um, Ottawa too. I mean, the, the Atlantic is tough because for years it was just like the top three teams. It was just like Toronto, Boston, Tampa, and it was like one, two, three, and then every every other team that made it was in the Metro. It was five in the Metro, the three in the Atlantic. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I I could see the Sens. Making it, I think they're better in net. I think they were really injured last year, too. They were kind of similar to Jersey. Um, but I think that'll be tough. I think for me, I'd say Florida, Toronto, uh, Tampa, and uh, I'd say I'd say Detroit make it in that division. Oh, Boston, huh? Yeah, I, I think I think if Boston doesn't have if Boston doesn't have a goal, I think they're screwed. Yeah. Well, but Detroit didn't get in last year when Tortorell pulled his goalie. Uh, against Washington, that final. I was final so mad. I was so that. mad at that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't blame. I mean, he had to do what he had to do. Like, I, I don't. Well, I don't blame him all. And, but and the, the way it happened, that. yeah, like the way it happened. If that game went to overtime, the Flyers still had a chance, and they yeah. scored with like point three or like three seconds of whatever it was to tie it. And I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I, th- I think if it, I think if they lost in regulation, the Flyers had a chance, but they tied yeah, it. And then it was yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they got a point, and then that eliminated them. And that was before the Flyers even pulled the goalie. Yeah, it, like me and my, me and my buddy were at the game, we're watching it, and we're watching the other one on the phone, trying to see like what's going on. And you know they ended up scoring, but you know regardless. But yeah, I mean that was that was crazy. Yeah, that's that was kind of a unique time. Red Wings, I'm not sure they got Patrick Kane at Christmas time. I feel like he was the life lifeline that that team needed. You lose Dave Perron, it was a pretty gutsy effort. Yeah. Uh, that so guitar, so go. And yeah, I don't. Tampa, Tampa might be on their way down a little bit. I yeah. Tampa might be out. Um, Toronto, obviously, they're 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 kind of in their prime. Boston's still so cagey. Yeah. Still so players. Florida, obviously, you wouldn't expect them to drop too far. So to no. me, it's between. I think it's between Tampa and Detroit. I don't know okay. about Buffalo, Ottawa, and Montreal. I don't, yeah, I don't see much, but I, I see, yeah, kind of. I think it's between Tampa and Detroit for that final spot there, and okay. So one of those might still get a wild card. Yeah, yeah. Know, if, if whoever's not in might still get a wild card out of Tampa and Detroit, right? And just John Cooper seems to, you know, I, I know they're they're like Stamkos a big loss, and I know Getzel is a great replacement. You're never going to replace Stamkos on a power play, but five of five probably Getzel's probably a good player there they're relying more on depth guys now and they still have that goaltending you know and yeah. they have to still play 27 minutes a night so there's some right. good i mean so i think it's between tampa and detroit for that fourth one and then um, whoever doesn't get it they're, they're wild card I think. okay all right uh the central dallas winnipeg colorado nashville st louis minnesota um utah not arizona and then chicago um I think Nashville wins a division. I think with the buzz around them, I think with Stamkos, with Marcia So, he had a lot of goals. I think they were good last year just in, in terms of um you know, I think in that they I think in that they're solid. I don't know. I get, I just see the it's kind of similar to Utah. Like I, I could see Utah making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Just with the buzz around the city and, and everyone just kind of going there. It's a whole new thing and and it's like, hey, you know, let's just play well kind of thing and, and they end up doing it. I think yeah. Dallas is one of the best teams in the league. Probably second best team in the league, in my opinion. Um, Colorado, I could see the Jets, Mike. I don't know. I mean, the, Winnipeg is is weird. They had such a good season, then they were out in five uh, yeah. in the playoffs. I, I don't know how. To, I never know how to read Winnipeg. I think yeah. St. Louis is kind of boom or bust. Like they kind of have to make the playoffs. Um, I, I mean, maybe Minnesota. I, I don't think they're making the playoffs. And then Chicago is is that's kind of a given. I think they'll be better, but I don't think they're making it. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I, Winnipeg, I don't know. They're hard. I just don't see them a ton, you know? Yeah. Uh, in the same they're way. Hard. Yeah. I don't really care to watch them a ton. Yeah. But team, I don't know. You know, is Nashville. Can Nashville be better than them? Nashville, that and Sam Coles. I think Nashville might be a team on the rise. I could see Winnipeg coming out, Nashville moving up, Colorado moving up too. I mean, still have 
you know, McKinnon and they're, they're kind yeah, of all the, yeah, right. right now. So I got Dallas, Colorado, Nashville, probably Winnipeg fighting it out a little bit more with, but that's a 20 point drop. I mean, they're not going to have it. There's a 20 point swing there between the blues and the jets. And is either one going to, you know, is either one going to make or lose that, you know, is Winnipeg going to yeah. lose 10 is St. Louis going to gain 10. Yeah. Let out Cause, that, cause that's like four or five games right there. Yeah. 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 So I probably have Winnipeg dropping to fourth in that. I, I don't know if St. Louis okay. is get up there. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think they're kind of similar to the Islanders. Like they're real old. You know, they don't have as much as much left in the tank. Um, what about Utah? You think Utah makes it? I don't know. I you know, I forgot about them. Yeah, and that's being in this, uh, I'm looking at an old list of teams, but uh, Yeah, so am I, yeah. I don't know, still Arizona. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I know they got uh, who they get on defense, Sergeyev or whatever. Sergeyev, yeah, yep. Sergeyev, mm-hmm. Yeah, Sergeyev, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Know. Yeah, I see them. Are they a possible wild card? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see them means like a second wild card team in the West. Yeah, wild card. You know, I, mean, I don't think they they go far. I think they probably lose first round, but um, you know, we'll we'll see. Yeah. Uh, and then the round out, we got the Pacific. This one I think is is pretty easy. I think it's the Oilers. I think they'll win the division. Uh, I think you have Vancouver. I don't know if the Canucks will have as better of a season as last year. And then the rest of it, I think, is a toss up because I think the Kings are okay, but now they don't have Dowdy. Um, you have Vegas, who's still going to be right there, kind of chomping at a bit. I think the Flames are going to take an even bigger step back. I'd love to see Seattle rebound. Um, they went from two years ago, they were six in goal scoring last year, they were 29th. So uh, something's got to give there, and then they got to go right in the middle. Um, if they could do that, I think they'll get in. Uh, I, I think the Ducks can make a push. I don't think they're there yet. They have a lot of young talent, and uh, San Jose is, is San Jose. So yeah, I could see you know Vegas jumping over LA. Edmonton yeah. went in, I agree with that. Vegas yeah. jumping over LA, LA and Calgary being a little bit more of a battle. But again, there's another twenty point swing. Exactly. Know? Is, are they 10 worse and are they 10 better? I don't know. That's yeah. kind of a good question. Maybe, you know, Calgary's a threat to get a, a, a wild card. And then Seattle, I don't know. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Team, like, and then looking I'm just like. That's are kind of the same. I mean, minus 18, minus 19 on the year. All different. Yeah. So they're pretty close. Same amount of points. It's pretty darn close. So. Right. All right, Mike. So now we just have trivia. Um, this was a little different. You, you, you've been doing pretty good at these. Um, now this, my this life. One, it's, it's kind of my yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't have to look it up, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. Good point. Um, okay, so this one is a uh, college question. This one's Michigan. Um, so you are first all time in game winning goals in a season at Michigan, uh, with how many in nineteen ninety four ninety five. Game winners? Yeah, game winning goals. That was my yeah. senior year. That was my senior year. So I probably had what I have that year, 36 or 38, something like that. So I probably had game winners. I probably had eight that year. Eight. <laughs> Is that right? That's, yeah, that's Is that right. right. Yep, eight. Oh my god. <laughs> eight game winners. <laughs> like I studied my stat, like I studied my yeah. stat. But I, I'm I'm convinced you have this list somewhere and, and I just yeah. don't know it. <laughs> I did not. Yeah. I swear to God, I, I was going to say seven or eight, seven or eight ish, because I was like thirty eight. Got to be, you know, trying to good at me. Got to pile up on you. Pile up some goals on people, but yeah, I, I think I was pretty consistent that year. In all fairness, yeah, I, you know, it, wasn't, it wasn't like it wasn't like four here or four there, and all of a sudden you're at thirty five. You know, it's like I was pretty. I chip away at a pretty good goal, two goals here. And there. I don't even know if I had that many. I had a couple of that year. Yeah, you had you had sixty points in thirty four games, thirty eight goals, twenty two assists. Yeah, yeah. sixty two pims. So I mean, it feels like it was probably you know two three points a night, pretty much each night is what yeah, it felt yeah, like. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was a fun year. It was a really good. We're good yeah. players. It's, yeah, you know, I was looking at the rosters. The rosters pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, like Michigan all time has a lot of a lot of guys that played. Yeah, um, in the NHL and all that, and a lot of recent guys, Wierenski. Kyle Connor, um, yeah. Hughes. Uh, yeah, Quigley. we were. I mean, that that like 91, 91 to about ninety 
eight, nine, 90, 91 to about 2000 was a lot. You know, that like when collective bargaining switched, then he had the Larkins and the Ruwenskis and, you know, True yeah. was there for two years because they needed to go, you know, and then back. Haglin, then, yeah. yeah, before, yeah, I think well, Haglin, he might have been like a four year back. But, I think so. Yeah. yeah. But then once collective bargaining kind of switched, like those guys were, you know, they got, they got taken up pretty good. And, and there were a lot of first rounders starting to get drafted. Kyle Connor was probably a guy that was a little better than, uh, turned out to be a, probably a better player than they would have thought, you know, but, you know, and then, the, you know, you get the program, you know, the, the advent of the U.S. national program too, you know, it was, it was based mm -hmm. right there it, for years. It was based in Ann Arbor and then it was based in Plymouth 10 miles away. So it's, you know, where it is right. now, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. The kids get it rammed down their throat. It's pretty, pretty easy for them to just kind of go over to Ann Arbor. It feels pretty comfortable. You know? So yeah, you get a benefit of that lately for sure. Right. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, there it is, episode three. Uh, how we feeling, Mike? Good, feeling great, buddy. Yeah, there don't shut the microphone this time. No more technical yeah. difficulties. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, okay. Uh, thanks everybody again for all support as always. Um, for you know, watching, listening, we really do appreciate it. Uh, again, apologies for last episode. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one a little earlier, uh, throughout the week. And I will talk to you guys all again next week. See you guys. See ya.